Okay, pre-cal kids, this is section one of chapter one. Even though we've already done a chapter, it was called chapter P. So now we're officially, I guess, into the numerical chapters, chapter one. This is the first section. Um, we're actually going to break it up into two parts. So this is part one, where we're going to talk about uh, the different types of mathematical models. Okay, there are three, and you can see the definitions here. Uh, a numerical model is just what it says. It uses numbers or data. Okay, and we can use those numbers to gain insight into a situation, whether uh, the costs increase or decrease uh, and stuff like that. Uh, an algebraic model uh, uses formulas. So you'd have to, given certain information, you would have to create an equation, a formula, to relate variables that are being studied. Okay, um, and then a graphical model is taking the numerical model Okay, taking those numbers, taking that data, and putting it into a graph. So, uh, Honors Algebra 2 kids, if you remember last year when we did the L1 and the L2, where we put the data for one variable in one column and one variable for another, and we got a scatter plot. Uh, this is what they're talking about. Okay, uh, taking these, I guess you want to call them points, and putting them on a graph and figuring out um, or making conclusions based on that. So there's three different types of models that uh, you're going to see. Uh, they're all pretty simple. Uh, I don't think there should be a whole lot of uh, issue with these. Now, in case you forgot how to create a scatter plot using your calculator, here are the steps. Okay, first step, you want to hit the stat key, then click edit. Then put your x coordinates into L1 and your y coordinates into L2. Uh, then hit quit. Hit window and adjust your viewing window. This seemed to be the biggest problem in my class last year, Honors Algebra 2 kids. Uh, was never, uh, we never really understood like how to make the window good for us to view our graph. So uh, as a general rule, your X min should be a number smaller than your smallest X coordinate and your X max should be bigger than your largest X coordinate. And then follow the same rules for your Y's. Hit stat plot and then turn plot one on. Make sure all other plots are off. If I'm not mistaken, that just means um, when you get to plot one and you hit enter, um, I don't know if there's an on off, but if there's not, plot one will be highlighted. Make sure the other ones are not. Highlight the scatter plot and make sure your X list is, is L1 and your Y list is L2, and then hit graph. So again, you can go back and use those, even take a screenshot of that if you want, so that you can uh, use that when you're doing the scatter plots on your calculator. Um, to do the best fit line or curve. This is lin reg, quad reg, cubic reg, okay? Honors Algebra 2 kids, you remember this from last year, especially my guys, we use this a lot. Once your scatter plot is graphed, observe if it looks linear, quadratic, cubic, cubic, etc. Hit stat, then calc. Depending on what the graph looks like, you would hit lin reg, quad reg, and cubic reg. Whatever regression line you chose will now show up on a screen. You will then type in L1, then a comma, then L2, then that's they tell you in parentheses how to get that. Hit enter and the coefficients for each will be given to you. Plug these into the equation to get your algebraic model. So even if you forgot how to do that from last year, uh, again, here are the steps listed out for you. You guys can follow those and uh, it should be pretty simple. Okay, so the first example, um, this is just a chart of uh, the minimum hourly wage. Uh, they go in five-year increments here from 1955 to 2005. Now, the thing I really want to focus on right now um, is just the actual minimum wage. So the first column is your minimum hourly wage, okay, which is minimum wage we call it today. And then what they do is, is they take that number and they compare it to what its purchasing power would be in 1996 value, okay. But I'm not really worried about that right now. I'm just telling you what those two columns are. So there's a couple questions. The first one, in what five-year period did the actual MHW, minimum hourly wage, increase the most? So you go back, okay, so from here to here it's 25 cents, 25 cents, whoops, 35 cents, 50 cents, a dollar, that might be a winner, we'll see, uh, 25 cents, 45 cents, another 45 cents, 90 cents, and then nothing. So it would appear that from 1975 to 1980, that was the five-year period that had the biggest jump because the hourly or the minimum wage jumped five bucks. So, from 1975 to 1980, 
from 1975 to 1980. Okay. Now it says, in what year did, that should say did, not did, in what year did a worker in earning the minimum hourly wage enjoy the greatest purchasing power? So you go back. Okay, well, oh, whoops. I don't think I wanted to do that. Where's undo? There we go. Undo, undo. Oh, there we go. Whoops. Like I said, I'm still getting used to this. Um, so, if I go back, and now it's all screwed, it's all screwed up now. Fantastic. Uno momento. Okay. So now that I fixed everything, and <laughs> some people would say, well, you should start over, Mr. Habit. Well, not really. Okay. This takes a lot of work, so I don't want to restart it. Um, so I just fixed everything. And we're back to where we were before. So we went through uh, the chart, okay, this chart right here, determined that from 1975 to 1980 was the highest increase of the minimum wage. Now, the next question says, in what year did a worker earning the MHW enjoy the greatest purchasing power? So what you want to do is find out from here what the highest value was, okay? So if you look down this list right here, uh, 647 appears to be the highest value, and that is in 1970. So, 1970 was the year that a worker earning the MHW enjoyed their most purchasing power. A worker on minimum wage in 1980 was earning nearly twice as much as a worker on minimum wage in 1970, and yet there was great pressure to raise the minimum wage again. Why? Well, if you go back, we'll hit the right buttons this time, guys. How about that? <laughs> Some of you are going, what the heck is this guy doing? Okay, so 1970 to 1980, okay, the minimum wage itself actually went up a dollar fifty, but its purchasing power went down 50, 57 cents. Okay, so the reason is, okay, inflation affected that. Okay, in the 70s, inflation had a great effect, great effect on the purchasing power of your money. Okay, so 57 cent decrease in the actual purchasing power. Okay, in 1980, people are saying, hey, you know, the minimum wage is 310, but I, it, it's not... I'm not getting as much bang for my buck as I did in 1970. So that's why. Because the purchasing power, come on, because the purchasing power wasn't as great in 1980. Okay, so Part D says write an algebraic model to predict the minimum wage in future years. Let X represent the years after 1900. Okay, so what you would do is, what I would do is I would make, let me erase this here. I would make this X and this Y, and I would use the steps that I outlined for you uh, to create a model in your calculator, okay? All right, and make sure you do that, and practice that, and, and uh, we'll move on from there. All right, last one. Below represents the relationship between distance and time elapsed of a ball rolling down the hill. What's well, rolling down a hill? They call it an inclined plane, but that's, that's a hill, okay? So... What graphical model fits the data? So is it linear? Is it quadratic? Is it cubic? Now, you know, this is just me, but if I'm looking at this, I'm probably seeing that it doesn't, this doesn't increase, the distance traveled doesn't increase at a constant rate. So I would imagine that linear would be probably out 
okay? All right? But we can go over that in class tomorrow and we'll, we can figure that out for ourselves. When it says find and write an algebraic model that fits, again, here's your x, here's your y, okay? Once you determine what this is, okay, once you determine what that is, now this is when we do our lin reg, quad reg, or cubic reg. Although, to be honest, I think your lin reg and your quad reg are going to be the ones you use the most. I don't think you're going to do much with the cubic. So you got to make a decision. Is that linear or is it quadratic? Okay. Um, again, my own personal feeling is that this data does not show it decreasing or, I'm sorry, increasing at a constant rate. So linear may be crossed out. Okay. So you may want to think about quad reg there. Okay. Uh, you're going to get a worksheet that you're going to have all period to work on in class. I'll make sure you guys have the answer so you can check to see if you're doing it right. Um, part two will be coming uh, Wednesday. Uh, be on the lookout for the notes for that. And uh, we'll talk to you in class, guys. Take care.